as biologists, we may never be able to answer the question of why we are here, but we can certainly answer the question of how we got here. And we do so through the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution is explaining the change in life, or how life changes over time and across many generations. It is not necessarily about how life started, it's more about how life changes once it's already around. A special branch of evolution will address the beginning of life, but the evolution as we are going to address in this lecture series is actually more about how life changes. And I would like to ask you to keep an open mind, no matter what your background is like, because it's always good to learn more, to ask questions, to have, have an open mind about the world. If, even if you do not like what you hear, it is good to hear the other side, to know what the other side is saying, so that you can make your own arguments and make an educated decision and be able to actually con engage in discourse and argument, which is actually the core of what enhances sciences over time. Inquiry in science is at the core of who we are as scientists, and so it's very important to keep an open mind. And even about evolution, you have to have inquiry. You have to ask questions. You have to find loopholes. You have to find problems in the theory. But I would like to ask, ask an open mind to see if evolution is not a better solution to whatever you can use to explain the world that's around you. And it's actually this kind of inquiry, this kind of questioning, this kind of open-mindedness that led to the development of this theory, which, as you, I will talk about, is not necessarily against anything that you possibly believe in. Now, I would like to start to say, too, that evolution is not about belief. It's actually substantiated by thousands of years of fossil records, uh, embryological studies, molecular biology, and a lot of other kinds of research. In fact, this is something that you have to get in your mind right now. The idea of theory in science, okay? Theories is not like, I hate that when people say just a the theory, because it makes it sound like it's nothing, like it's just a guess that people have or some sort of baseless infer infer inference about the world. Even a hypothesis in science is not like that. We do hypothesis based on observations, but a theory is much more than an educated guess or some sort of inferred explanation about the world. It's actually based on a lot of evidence. And the theory of evolution is perhaps one of the most intricately researched parts of the biology. It is, there is a lot of evidence to substantiate the theory of evolution. And so when we use this term theory, Remember, you accept something like the theory of gravity and you live with it every day. In your entire life, you know that things fall towards the ground. Although, as we learn in earth space science, new theories have come up to address the concept of gravity. Like the general relativity, which talks about uh, gravity as bending in space-time continuum rather than actually just falling in a straight line. And so objects is more like a roll down a gravity hill. And I love to use that example to show that every theory, yes, is subject to change. But any theory in science is based on evidence, and evolution has a lot of evidence. And so don't think of this as just a theory. On the contrary, it is a lot of evidence to actually substantiate what we're going to be talking about. Another thing that I would like to actually clarify very clearly in your mind right now, no matter what your misgivings may be about the theory of evolution, no matter what baggage you've come to this lecture with, remember this. Evolution is not about the origin of life. When we say the origins of species, yes, we are interested in coming out where we came from, but we're not actually trying to answer the question of where did life start per se. There is a special branch of biology which is related to evolution that's called abiogenesis, where we learn about how life started. And we will address that in another lecture series, but this lecture series is about how life changes or how new species come from older species, how that life changes over time and across many of generations. So do not necessarily confuse evolution with abiogenesis. They're, they're related, but not the same thing. And so you are, you are able to accept this theory of evolution without necessarily arguing the origin of life. Uh, we're talking about the origin of species here, and there's a nuance here that you have to get, I hope. Now, the reason why we actually have to talk about evolution is because evolution is at the core of biology. It is, in fact, the most important central theme of biology. It explains everything that happens in biology. It is one of the central characteristics of life because every life form on Earth evolves, and it's also the core of explaining life. 
It is evolution that explains why in light form fixed function. Why are there so many structures to do so many different jobs? Why are there so many different jobs and why is it that life finds different ways to accomplish it? Why is there so much diversity in life? Why is there life constantly changing? Why is there evidence that animals go extinct and sometimes can't survive? And why is there evidence that sometimes new kinds of life show up? All of this, the extinctions, the speciation of the beginnings of new life forms, the diversity of life, and the fact that life has a lot of structures to do a lot of jobs, all of this is explained through the theory of evolution. And it therefore is at the core of everything we have to learn about in the year that we talked about biology. Now, I know everyone comes to any discussion with something already in their mind. And I know that a society, religion, culture, and even your personal take on life may actually influence the way you perceive the things I'm going to be talking to you throughout this lecture series. But I'm going to ask you one more time to keep an open mind. Because I believe that religion and science do not have to, have to be enemies. But more importantly, this particular example here, it is possible to talk about one without influencing the other. It is possible to separate things in your mind, even if it is, just to learn about the other side and to have, keep an open mind. And finally, remember that everything we're going to be talking about is based on years of research that have substantiated this theory. Uh, to the, and actually, that when we say theory, we actually mean something that we can use to explain biology in a way that nothing else does. And that's why we actually learn about a theory of evolution. And on the next lecture, lecture video, we're actually going to be talking about how, where this all came from or where the original ideas for the theory of evolution started. Okay, guys, see you guys then.